What's up everyone, River here, and I am here with the team builder for the PTL Week 1 against the San Antonio Superiors and the coach, All the Games. This week, um, I feel like the matchup is going to be quite fun. I'm going to show us show the teams right here, as you see on your right. There are my team on the top, his team on the bottom. I don't feel like reading them out because you can read as well, it's not that difficult. But here's the team that I'll be bringing. You quickly just saw everything, but I'm just going to go over... Most of the sets quite quickly because they're not very special, with one exception I suppose. But we'll get there when we get there. First off, we got Zygarde 50 with Choice Band, Dual Stab, E Speed and Rock Slide. It's a quite simple set, but it's quite simple what he has to do. He has to break his team. On his team, he only has three switch-ins, being a physically defensive Mew, a, a Concalder if he's very bulky. Well, not, not Concalder actually, I mean Licky Licky. Licky Licky could, um, what's it called, wish stall the Thousand Arrows if he properly, if he's fully physically defensive. And Rebombi technically is a Thousand Arrow switch in, but that's why we run Rock Slide. With that in mind, he really has a hard time dealing with Zygarde. He shouldn't be able to prep for just one set because multiple sets are viable. The Sub Coil could be a set, Dragon Dance could be a set. I was toying with Dragon Dance at the beginning stages of building. One. But I opted for the Choice Band set instead because it's not going to be my win con. I feel that if he comes out with a physically defensive Mew, which I think is relatively likely, then he will have very little trouble dealing with my Zygarde. With that in mind, like I said before, it's simply the goal is to break his team because outside of the three Pokemon I mentioned earlier, he has no switch into the Zygarde. And with that, it's just going to be very difficult for him to deal with it which will allow for my Halucha to set up for a sweep in late game. I'm going over my Pokemon in the order in which I added them to the team, so you can not just see the Pokemon I brought and why I brought them, but also in the order in which I went through my team as well. Halucha's goal is obvious. It's gonna come in on terrain, it's gonna get its unburden boost, it's gonna get a special defense boost, and I'm gonna try to set up a sweep. With just Acrobatics and Drain Punch, it hits everything for neutral, because his... I believe he only has two flying resists, or was it only two fighting resists? I think it's just two fighting resists with Rebombi and Roserade. Yeah, that's what's it. And a Mew. Okay, Mew is also a fighting resist. So three fighting resists, of which two are weak to flying. So I didn't really need any coverage, I didn't need any special moves, and I don't think I need the power of high jump kick to break through his team either. Salt Stance obviously is what gives me the power to actually sweep, and Substitute is there so I can set up other likes of physically defensive Mew, assuming it's going to try and willow with me because due to Halucha being a flying type, it is it does not get the status immunity in terrain. Or even Rotom Wash, Rotom Wash could also try to, to Will-O-Wisp. And if I get that prediction right, I should be able to get game, assuming Zygarde has done his job earlier in weakening his walls. Obviously, if I want to sweep with Halucha, I am also going to need to Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini is going to be physically defensive, so I can take hits from Zardax, it can take hits from Conkelda, assuming it is not, like, um, what's it called? Choice Band Poison Jab? That's the one set that would easily break Tapu Fini. And besides so that, he doesn't really have many. Uh, he has Extra Drill too. I, I keep forgetting about Extra Drill offensively. Offensively, Extra Drill could be annoying, but that's why we also have Tapu Fini. With Nature's Madness and Moonblast, it can effectively 2 and 3 hit KO everything on his team due to Nature's, Moon, Nature's Madness taking out half of someone's HP, uh, current HP even. Then I opt for a Haze over Bloody Water, just in case a Charizard X gets out of control or if he brings Dual Dance Mew, which I'm kind of fearing a Nasty Plot, a Rock Polish, Psy Shock Filler Mew could be very annoying to this team because it's one of the few things that could actually outspeed a lot of my team. Which uh, reminds me, the EVs on Halucha are here to outspeed a plus 2 Sword or a plus 2 Mew. Whereas Zygarde simply has enough speed to outspeed Roserade, and outside of that I just invested into his defensive stats, and obviously Max Attack for both cases. With Fini, it is simply enough speed. I believe this speed is to outspeed a uninvested Rotom Wash, or an uninvested Roserade, it's one of the two. Might just be Hunchcar actually too. I'm, I'm not entirely certain what it was, but there was a fault that was some idea behind it, and the rest is just purely physically defensive, so it can take on any physical attacker. Last move Defog, again, it's, it's very sad and it's very straightforward. I don't want to deal with Stealth Rocks coming from either Mew or the... Or Excadrill. Excadrill again, yeah. And I just don't want to deal with Toxic Spikes either from Roserade, because if Fini has to switch in on them, 
Fee will get poisoned before the terrain go goes up. So I do want to prevent that. Even though my next Pokemon is my dedicated answer to Roserade and even more so to the Rebombi in Heligo. Now Heligo's goal, again, it, it's a very straightforward set. It just has enough speed to outspeed the base 100s. It has enough special attack to do its job because even more special attack would not gain me anything. It would not change rules in my favor or anything like that. One paired up with Axe that is. And the remainder will be put into HP so it can actually take hits slightly better. The goal, like I said, is, is very simple. Rebombi cannot break this thing. Even if Rebombi goes to plus two, Nihiligo will beat it 1v1 with Power Gem because it can take a plus two Psychic. Rebombi's best move to hit Nihiligo is Psychic because it doesn't get Psy Shock. Hidden Power Ground is an option, but I don't think it has room to run Hidden Power Ground because it's going to need Quivenance. If it's assuming it's an offensive set, it's going to need Quivenance, it's going to need Moonblast, and it's going to need Psy Shock. Because Psyshock would also be its best move to hit the Halucha with. Um, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, I, I am saying that correctly because of the Spadef boost from the C move. About Nelio's move though, it has dual stab because once again, that, that's going to be a common theme in this matchup, is the dual stab is very good for the Pokemon that I'm bringing. Between the Rock and the Poison stab, the only thing that really wants to take a hit might be a Roserade and Pokelda. And that's why I'm also bringing Psychic. Psychic with Extra Belt can 2 it KO Conkeldor, I believe. It can Oko Roserade. I want to say Sludge Wave also hits uh, Charizard really hard without Extra Belt, obviously. Sludge Wave was. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely certain what the calcs were Extra Belt was for. I feel I prepped this team way too early, honestly. I prepped this quite soon after the draft. But I am confident that this is, t this is the set that I want to bring, unless suddenly I bring and make some changes, I will mention that before the battle, but right now I feel like this is the set I want to go for, and Stealth Rock obviously, because Stealth Rock is going to help my breakers a ton. I will specify that later with the most important Pokemon, or like, the Pokemon that I put the most thought into, which I'll get to soon, but first, we have Galvatula. Again, very straightforward, even more hazards, dual stab, hidden power water, sticky web, and enough speed to outspeed the base 100s. Uh, let me compare that to Helio real quick. Yeah, that, those are both meant to outspeed the likes of Charizard X and Mew. Hidden Power Water with the Extra Belt, 2 it kills Excadrill. Thunder Oko did the um, Hunchcrow, quite obviously, but still. I believe with the Extra Belt, I also got a better roll on someone else. But I can't think fear for the life who maybe it was a two at kill on defensive view i think it was bug buzz because of two at kill on defensive view with the extra belt again very straightforward set i don't really have much to say about it the extra point in hp might not be optimal but i figured the defense investment was worth more than going for hp investment because the things that can hit galvantula are rebombi which frankly i don't care much about the mock punch from um Conkelda. And there was Scarf Excadrill. I think it was for Scarf Excadrill, so I can guarantee to hit him once. Also, why is this still a thing? Huh? That, that should not be a thing anymore because of... That is a problem. IV should just be maxed out anyway because of um, Super Training or whatever. It's hyper Training. Anyway, that, that's a problem for later. I'll try to get the theater out at some point. Um... With that in mind, the goal is to slow down Pokemon so that its setup sweepers become less threatening, once again referring to Mew and Charizard X. And besides that, Galvantula is there to just poke a couple of Pokemon. I'm not running Volt Switch, I was thinking about Volt Switch, but I don't have room for it. If I didn't need to hit Power Water for Excadrill, I would not have ran... I would have ran Volt Switch instead. Now, with the last few Pokemon, you could tell there was a theme between some Pokemon either not being able to touch Excadrill or, or hard countering it. And that's quite important for my final Pokemon, being the Komala. This set, while not super special or anything, is a set that has, has some good reasoning behind it. There is a lot of thought going behind it. First off, the fact that it's Comatose. Comatose is low-key one of the best abilities in the game. And the fact that Komala cannot be stand is huge, but the second part it tends to be slapped on, <laughs> no pun intended, because he's considered to be asleep at all times. For himself, that doesn't matter much, because he can still attack. But for Sleep Talk, that means a lot, because that means you can just click Sleep Talk no matter what, 
and it will still activate as if you're asleep. Now this is what pairs up really well with Lost Resort. I believe it only gets Sleep Talk during Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. And Sleep Talk force obviously targets one of your other moves and activates it. The thing about Lost Resort is that it is the second strongest physical normal type move in the game. Unless I'm forgetting about some signature move, but I don't think there are many normal type signature moves. But with that in mind, Lost Resort hits really hard. But only works if it is the last, if every other move before it has been used. There is one asterisk to this, and that is that Lost Resort cannot be the only move. Because technically speaking, Lost Resort had not been used before Lost Resort, thus Lost Resort would fail. It sounds really weird, but that's just how it's goaded. However, with the, with the combination of these two moves and the guarantee that Kamala is considered asleep, I will be allowed to just fire off Bandit Lost Resorts like it's nothing. With the side benefit that instead of using the 8pp of Lost Resort, it uses the 16pp from Sleep Talk, meaning I can use it even more often. Even though, let's be honest, I'm not gonna throw off more than 2 or 3, because once the gimmick is known, it becomes a lot easier to react to. But this is where the game becomes more interesting. For my opponent, as you can tell from his team, has no ghosts. The fact that he has no ghosts means that he has no true switch ins to Lost Resort. His one normal resist, Excadrill is 2 hit KO'd by this. Almost every single Pokemon on this team is 2 hit KO'd by this, except for the ones that are o code by this, such as Revombi, such as Hunchcrow, Frogadier with Valley Violet, and I believe Rogerate 2 is o code by Lost Resorts. Every other Pokemon is either, is most likely gonna be 2 hit KO'd, it, it, sorry, is definitely gonna get 2 hit KO'd, but some of them are gonna get o code with rocks up, such as Zard X. Uh, Physical Mew can take two, Expert can always take two. I believe Rotom gets O code with Rocks Up, it's just max HP. And Licky Licky gets O code with Rocks Up, it's max HP, even though I'm assuming if Licky Licky shows up, it's gonna be Fizz Dev. Meaning that this thing just claims a kill every time it comes in. A big boon to this as well is its speed. With base 65, unless my opponent puts a significant amount of speed in Coquelda, this thing can always come in on Conkeldor and just nuke it. Because Conkeldor with an abysmal amount of chip, assuming it is a max HP, and let's say it gets 5-10% chip on it, it gets o code as well by Lost Resort. And that type of pressure is immense. Because if Komala literally can claim a kill every time it comes in, that is huge. That, that cripples him a ton. Because I just mentioned Conkeldor because it's slower, but Licky Licky is also slower. Rebombi can't hurt this, Mew can't hurt this, Excadrill can't Oko this unless it's Bandit, uh, or Life Orb Adamant actually. Rotom Wash can't Oko this, and I don't think Roserade can Oko this unless it's like Leaf Storm with Specs or Life Orb, similar to how Excadrill has to be. So, Kumala will get a, a sample of opportunities to KO something for free, and that is what makes this uh, a very important pick to me. Normally I don't think Kamala is that good, normally I would not be raving about it like I am now, because honestly it was dropped as a Ghost Resist and a Spinner, nothing more. But in this matchup I think it gets time to, ch to, to shine. With that, it is, uh, that's pretty much the team, I've got two Exo Belt users who have hazards and can poke down a couple of Pokemon, I have two Choice Band users who are gonna break his team. And this is also a little bit of a tandem here, because Komala's one problem is that it can't really reliably, reliably beat Excadrill. Excadrill can switch in once, yeah, literally just once, and then uh, try to claim his skill, but Zygarde can always switch in on Excadrill and then force some pressure of zone. And lastly, we've got the duo of Top of Fini Halucha, who will be trying to finish off the game. With that, that was it for. Oh, that was a little bit too early. <laughs> With that, that was good. That's gonna be my team builder, and hopefully you'll enjoy. If you have enjoyed this, and we'll enjoy the battle. I'll see you guys next time.